So skating is super simple. It's really just how much can I push without any weak links not allowing me to get speed out of it. Obviously, there's a lot of other things combined. You want to make sure to push straight from the start of your push. If you only start pushing at the end of it, well, you would have to push a lot harder than the person that starts pushing already in here. But essentially, the harder you can push without losing that energy speed before it goes into the ground, the faster you'll go. So there's a lot of reason we all, myself included, can't apply all the strength we have into the ground. Because we have weak links. So some of us may be the angles. If the angle goes in, well, that's going to be a weak link. Obviously, you want everything to be on a straight line. So say I'm here, I want to put power in. This should all be aligned. Some may cave in with the knee. Some may have shaky angles. A lot of it comes down to strength, which you just got to skate a lot or do a lot of dry land. And then over time, you'll fix that. But for the technical issues, you can work on a lot of that before you put on your skates. So a big, I think the most common mistake is that the knees go inwards. Because again, we're pretty good at walking forward, but pushing to the side, it is hard. There's a big reason this will go like here, because honestly, if I go down here, this is way more comfortable. So in order to get this up in a straight line, you'll have to use your gluteus medius, like the side of your butt, basically, because that is, when you contract this, it's gonna pull this up. So a thing I always do before I put on my skates is just warm up the side of your butt, basically. And very easy way to do that is just simply by lifting it. This is, it's a very good exercise. It's very specifically triggers here, if you do it well, and try and not cheat. Uh, that's a great exercise. And I feel like the days where I really skate well, I'm very, very sore in a very specific area here. So I would recommend all of you to just practice that movement and even go down in position and do it a little sort of behind at a 45-ish degree and try and see if this maintains solid, not using your upper body as a counterweight, but really isolate that specific muscle right there. You'll see in, in people that have skated a lot and skated well for a long time, they will have a like disproportionately large muscle right here that looks like a little, I don't know what. But that's a good thing. That means you know how to activate this and you have enough muscle to hold your knee out here. So those two is where I would start. Then the next thing I would, I always do these two. The next thing I would try and find ways to make sure I am fully onto each skate. Again, another bad habit when we get tired, instead of really using the push, because that can feel like a big effort, instead we'll just go here feels so much easier. But then you have your body weight. If you're not using that, you're again just gonna muscle through, but it's not gonna go into the ground really. So the next one is, it's a very simple exercise, really just going down and then feeling your body from skate to skate. By slowing down that movement and really feel like as you're almost pushing through the ground, but without anything tilting in. It, it seems like the most simple exercise, but it's, to do it perfectly is not easy. There's so many reasons why you would want this to go a little before, or why you would want it to fall instead of move on to it. So just doing this and focusing on the knees not going first, or the hip not going like that, it's a great exercise. And I think almost any skater, any good skater would agree with me that you create the majority of your power when you have your legs within your shoulder width. So that end of the push out here is, especially in inlines, basically does not matter. So this is really where you apply pressure. So just doing that exercise, you do it for a long time, it's a great workout, <laughs> will allow you to also kind of bridge the difference between just working on a good base position, being able to, to be in this position, but also being able to move in that position because there's a big difference. The next one would be the same, but really doing a full body weight transfer. So really just skating from side to side and feeling how the weight transfers from left to right leg, basically. And then you can test yourself by lifting the opposite leg off the ground 
and having this in the exact same position. Because that is where your challenge, that is, once you put the weight onto one leg, that's where we'll see all the flaws come out. Could this go backwards? Well, then we're not strong enough here. You have that in the back of your head as you're out skating, and you will remember how, how that felt when you're skating. And then the final two are, if you guys have seen any of the videos Sophia and I have made, published, you will know side extension and circles, which is really just taking this and putting it into something more skating specific. So side extension, you go down in the same position and then you drive one leg to the side without moving anything else around. So becoming steady there. And you will quickly notice that there's so many things, so many muscle groups you don't really use usually, but that it takes, takes positions like this to really engage those muscles. So you will feel if you do this long enough, you're gonna feel that this is working to hold it up, but you're also gonna feel that the opposite muscle will hold or will work to hold that knee out so it doesn't go in and out. Good rule of thumb, the slower you can do this, the better. It's, that just means more control. And again, for this, it's warm up. It's not necessarily a workout. It'll just make you better at your workout. And the final one is a circle. So you basically just add another dimension to it. So instead of just being stable left, right, you do a full circle. I'll show it from the side. You do a full circle where you go back here and then drive it forward side and forward that way again just like skating even if you're stable side to side if you skate well you're going to have a recovery like that goes back here so if you can control it not selling left to right well there's also going to be the part where you don't want to counterweight this by your upper body but instead just like in the beginning have this under knees forward because then you don't need to counterweight it you can just let that pressure go into the ground so there's just six good exercises that uh, I recommend you to do before any skating session. In general, I would say exercises like this, dry line exercises, isometric, statical work, muscle endurance, stamina, I would do that after skating because skating should always be the priority. If you kill your legs, you go out there and try and skate well, it's, it's not gonna be easy. Whereas if you do it the other way around, you can always dig a little deeper when you can slow the pace down, when you don't have to worry about the whole balance on thin wheels aspect of skating, that makes it a little easier. But if you do it as a warm up, I think it's some really nice activation exercises. Helped us a bunch. I really hope all of that made sense to you guys. I also hope you wanna join Sophia and I for two and a half days of skating workshop uh, we're gonna come back to Duluth and also Minneapolis. It's gonna happen on May 16th to May 18th and May 23rd to May 25th, 2025. Still spots available for both camps. It's gonna be super fun. All levels are welcome. And we just look forward to skating with all you guys and sharing some cool skating knowledge. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like, you know the drill. See you around guys.